when looking comparatively across other specialties and disease sets, um, that's that's one of the most pressing and most lacking um, advances that's been made is really preventive measures. And again, the timely diagnosis and tailored therapy that comes immediately after. I mean, that's sort of the game changer for every single field. And um, just to follow up on that point, Doc, do you imagine uh, at some point in the future they're, they're breakthroughs towards that space if, uh, again, uh, blood test diagnostics uh, advances in a certain way that we can start to um, provide more accurate and individualized therapies in a very timely sense for these patients. And um, again, this is um, part of the paper. I mean, that we doubt that there will be immediate and wide acceptance because uh, people still believe that they do not want to um, be guided by machines, basically, or by uh, molecules um, in, these, in this century-old tradition of weighing um, clinical symptoms. And also, um, th th there's, a, there's very good um, investigations on the, let's say, margin of discretion, where you know the psychiatrist can basically, according to the situation, and this involves also transcultural, of course, context, um, you know, shift the diagnosis in one or the other um, direction, which is perceived as an advantage in, in many situations. And so that's why we basically came up with this idea that eventually these, um, let's say, radical blood tests that could substitute a clinical diagnosis are not desired at this point. And so uh, we probably have to compromise on that. This is basically um, a realistic estimate on the future, I think, of this. But, you know, there's always, of course, a difference in what we should aim for and what we will then uh, ultimately get, um, uh, you know, after a certain time. And I think we should keep the aims very high. A anything else you want to add relative to the paper? No, I think you, uh, I think I mentioned almost every aspect. I think it's a uh, uh, very, uh, that and I think we have to to, to, to discuss these points because um, it is really remarkable that uh, there is so so few progress in uh, in clinical psychiatry compared to also neurology. You know, in neurology we have amazing therapies. All the you know CRISPR Cas is translated to psych neurological therapies. Um, in uh, psychiatry, we are still using uh, drugs that were, you know, um, invented uh, 70 years ago. Well, there is some change, I agree, uh, ketamine and all this, uh, these new drugs and maybe also uh, new applications of uh, psychedelics. But this is all experimental and preliminary, of course. But um, we would, and very clearly, um, you can't do a good therapy without a good biological diagnosis. Absolutely. I, I, I think you, if you laid it out like a map for all these specialties and disease spaces where, you know, there's a high patient population and a need to treat in a timely and individualized fashion, like we're talking about, you could see a map of trends and patterns and it's hard to distinguish that in psychiatry. You even, as you said, you see it in neurology, you see these therapies and advances building on one another towards something fundamental. And whereas psychiatry, like you said, very much older drugs, very experimental drugs, promising candidates, but you know, limited foundation in the moment. So it is interesting to see how diagnostics can benefit that as we as we progress it. So thank you so much for that, Doc.